unfair. Let's start with the hardest and go to the least here. I'm going to say problem number 18. Problem number 18, let's look at that one. See if we can't make heads or tails of this whole thing. Problem number 18. Negative 5 plus the square root of 25 minus 16 all over 2. Here's the deal, children. First of all, you got a couple of different sets of grouping symbols there. The first one being this. You need to simplify this whole thing. What is 25 minus 16? 9. And then the square root of 9 is 3. You are not allowed to take the square root of this and the square root of that and subtract them. You have to do what's under that grouping symbol, combine it before you take its square root. Okay? And then the next grouping symbol you have is this fraction line. Fraction lines separate the top from the bottom. You have to simplify everything on top and make sure everything on bottom is simplified before you divide this 2 into the top here. So now I have a negative 5 plus 3. Negative 5 plus 3 gives you negative 2. Basically, you have 5 negative signs and 3 positive signs. And three, those 3 positives cross off with the 3 negatives, and you're left with the balance of the negative 2. And then it is just 2 divided into negative 2. When you multiply and divide, 1 negative makes the whole thing negative 2, and the 2 is 1. Negative 1. We might as well do 19 while we're here. I don't know how many people missed that. This is just simple multiplication. You don't have to worry about negative exponents like we've been doing. This should be really easy. You multiply the numbers together. 3 times 2 is 6. And x squared times an x basically is this. x squared is x times x and times another x. What do you have there? x cubed. y times a y. Y times y is y squared. And generally, you put them in order of x, y, and z, and just kind of lay it out with the camera. Um, is it okay if you add that x to the Put these together? No, I was talking about the exponent. Put the 2 to the 1? Yeah. Yeah, same thing. I was just showing you that. Yeah, add exponents together. When you multiply, you add exponents together. 2 plus 1 is 3, 1 plus 1 is 2. Uh -oh. Well, let me see if there are any other big hitters on this whole thing here. Um, do we do 13? Let's look at 13. Numero 13. Might be somewhere over here. 11, 12, and or 13. A six-foot diameter circular table has an area of about how many square feet? Maybe I read the answer wrong because this doesn't sound hard to me. On my notes for tomorrow, which I encourage you to do, you would have drawn this square round table. It's a six foot diameter. And then I would write down the formula for the area of a circle. Grace Christ, area of a circle is? Pi times radius times radius. And they told you what to use for pi, so that's pretty simple. And the radius, please make sure 6 was the diameter, so the radius is 3. So you're going to multiply, I would do the two threes first rather than doing this time of that, because you can multiply in any order. 3 times 3 is 9, so 3.14 times 9, 36, 3, 12, 27, 28, two decimal places, 28.2. Six. Eight point two six. And it is in feet. Area is squared. Did I read the answer wrong or did you just not know? Again, I would have that formula written. Please feel free to bring the formula, Cameron. Well, if the diameter of a circle is six, Cameron, the radius is half of that. The radius goes from the middle of the circle up. The diameter goes all the way, radius goes half. The diameter is always twice the radius, and the radius is always half of the diameter. Express um, as an irrational number. 
Problem number 14, in case that gave you fits. Remember irrational numbers? There's really only two different types you know. One of them is pi. That's irrational because it never ends. The other thing is a square root that doesn't work out. Square root of 3, square root of 5, square root of 7, square root of 11, square root of 13. Those don't have perfect answers. So they're telling you right now that when you use the Pythagorean theorem, you're probably going to get a square root that doesn't work out. What is the Pythagorean theorem? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. c is always the hypotenuse. And if you look at this, that's the one we don't know. So it's going to stay c squared. We don't have any idea what it is. We do know a and b, and these can be interchanged. So it doesn't matter which one you call. Usually we call the smaller one a, just for no reason. So 3 squared plus 5 squared. 3 times 3 is 9, don't say 6, 5 times 5 is 25, 9 and 25 is 34, and we had this multiple times. If c squared equals 34, c equals Riley, no. If c squared equals 34, c equals, okay, Square root of 34. And there is no square root of 34. That's why it's an irrational number. Okay, it told you to leave it as a square root that doesn't work out. That was its specific directions and or instructions there. Still looking at things before I like to go from, let's see, 19, 15, 15, 15, 15, 18, 10. Let's do problem nine. Just close. Then I'll let you ask questions because I'm sure some of you have. I said number nine, right? Number nine. The outside surfaces of a cereal box are printed with text and pictures. What is the print area of a box that is two inches by ten? What are they asking you for in this? They're not asking you how much stuff can go in the box. They're asking you how much is around the box that you can print on. So that is called what in our world is about? Yeah, they're asking you for the surface area. So if you sketch that box out, it is 2 inches by 7 inches by 10 inches. Here's my 7 inches. So your box 2 inches, and then maybe the box is 10 inches high. Too much wider. There's my cereal box. Anytime you have a rectangular prism like this, there are six sides that you have to find the area to. There is the front and the back, the right side and the left side, and the top and the bottom. But the nice thing is they're all really easy numbers to do. And the, the front and back are identical, the right side, left side are identical, top and bottom are identical. What is the area of Mr. Front here? 7 times 10. That is 70, and the back is identical, same, same shape. Right side, what's the area of this? 2 times 10, which is 20. The left side will be the same. And then the bottom and the top, I'm sorry, yeah, I did right. Bottom and the top is 2 times 7, which is 14. You add all that together, that is your total surface area. That's all the area you can print on. Quick way to do it, I don't know if there is what, you know, 70 and 20 is 90. Then there's another 90 here, and then those two together is 28, so 8, 18, 208, maybe right. Yeah. 208 in its area, so it's inches squared. Cameron, your question? Well, I tried to draw my box close. I could interchange all these. Just know that you're going to multiply each number by a different number each time. This was the 7 times 10, because this was the 2 times 10, and that was the 7 times 10. Which part? You're going to multiply this by this to get the area of that front. You're going to multiply 2 times that to get the area of the right side. Did you sketch it out? You have to sketch it out. You're going to multiply the three dimensions off. Each number of the three dimensions is going to get multiplied by the other number. Two is going to get multiplied by the seven. Two is going to get multiplied by the ten. And the seven is going to get multiplied by the ten. That's where those three sides come from. 
Fisher? Number 11, is that over here on the other side? I'm not sure it's on the other side. It's <coughs> oh, it's on the other page. How would I do number 11 to yes? First, of all, it says when Zena says a number, Yoli doubles the number. First of all, there's probably a reason why they picked Zena and the Yoli. Make a table that shows those numbers because they start with the letters we usually do this with. So if you make a table, this is Zena, and this is Yoli. Whatever Zena says, Yoli doubles, correct? So you get to pick, this is just picking whatever, if uh, Zena says zero, if you double zero, what do you get? Zero. If you put a one there and double it, you get? If you put a three there, you get? If you put an eight there, you get? Sixteen. So there's your table. Write an equation, start the equation with y. y equals, okay? And here's where you get mixed up. I mean, you're thinking division, you're thinking about this, but you have to have an x here. What are you doing to x every time to get y? You're multiplying it by 2. You are doubling it. Some of you put division, but that's not right. You don't take half of what x was to get y. You double what x is to get y. So just make sure on tomorrow, when they give you this, you go, okay, y equals, put a box there. Put an x there and then say, okay, what did I do to x to get to that y? Because that's what goes here. You know, maybe it's division. Maybe they'll say says a number that's half. Well, if he says a number that's half, then you could put x divided by two. But this was doubling so those two x. And I can see how that fits a little. Great. Anybody go look and see? This one here, just because it's here and I like it, gives me a chance to say this for the 35th thousandth time. If you have an equation and there's a fraction in front of the letter, Maddie, what do you do? Yes, you do, but I usually can give you an easier way to do that. I mean, when you divide by a fraction, what do you do? You, Isabel? Well, you want it to cross off, so you flip and multiply, which is what division is, but we just skip that rule. Flip and multiply, that makes these cross off. Two sevenths times two over one is four sevenths. Might as well do 16 because that seems to get people trouble. This is expanding distributive properties. Don't forget you have to take the sign with the last number when it multiplies. What is a negative 3 times x but a negative 3x? What is a negative 3 times positive 2 but a negative 6? That negative got distributed out to both of those. Negative times positive is always a negative. This was negative, those were both positives, and they end up being negatives. Fisher? Oh, 17. I'm surprised it wasn't under one of the big misses, was it? 17. Yeah, I guess half of you. Half of you is. Okay. Again, this was the fraction line is a grouping symbol, which means you have to take all of this and get it down to one number, and take all of this and get it down to one number before you do the division part of it. Let's do the bottom first. What is a negative 3 times a negative 4? Two negatives give you a positive, and 3 times 4 is... It's just a simple little 12 there. The other part of this is probably a little more confusing, but what you must understand, this, this part here is multiplication, but this part here is subtraction. So in order of operations, you must do this part first. 3 times 4 is 12. Two negatives make it a positive 12. This is a negative 12. 
what do you get when you put a negative square 12 of a with a positive of 12 of a? Negative 12 and positive 12 is 0. 12, 0 divided by 12 is 0. 0 divided by anything is 0. Wasn't that exciting? That's probably you've ever seen. It. There must be more out there, seventh grade. There must be. Somebody must. Mandy Roth wants to know why. Why? Oh, look at that. Now, look at this one is the volume. Remember, the other one was how much you could print around the outside. That was surface area. This is volume. It's 3 by 12 by 18. So, I don't know. You can draw it any way you like. I kind of, it still kind of looks like a cereal box. 3 by 12 by 18. And it is a rectangular prism. And you should smile at that because that makes life very easy. Because the volume of a rectangular prism is just length times width times height. All you are doing is multiplying the three dimensions together. And that will give you its volume. It doesn't matter what order. 3 times 12 times 18. Does anybody have a preference? What would you multiply together first? I don't know. Maybe I'd go 3 times 12 is 36 and 18 times 36 48 4 is 1 0. 3 times 18 is 54. I'm hoping that the answer was 648 and it's inches cubed because it is bound. Nine was surface area. This is volume. It'll probably be the same as tomorrow's test. Again, you may want to jot yourself some notes. Be handy and or dandy, Cam and Cole. No, which one? Just adding those fractions together, Cameron. Did you write them up and down? Now you could either add them first two and then add that to the next one, or you could do them all three at a time. Which way did you do it? Okay, so you add these two together. Common denominator is four, right? One fourth plus multiplied by two multiplied by two fourths is three fourths, correct? And then 3 fourths plus 5 6, what you use for a common denominator there? 20. Well, neither one of them going to 20. No, you're doing the bottoms, 4 and 6. Common denominator 4 and 6, I would go with maybe a 12. 6 times 2, 5 times 2 is 10. 4 times 3, 3 times 3 is 9. 9 twelfths and 10 twelfths is 19 twelfths. And believe it or not, when you start to get to be in the upper math, they'll let you leave that as improper as long as it's reduced. Most of you are still pretty much trained to make it this, I think. Either one, the book says right now, is kind of acceptable. Did they do something wrong? Okay. Um, for 12 and 15, it says about, then would you just do the exact one, or would you just ask Said with his Northern Illinois slash Wisconsin slash Michigan accent. If it says about, um, no, you can't. The reason it says about is because of this right here. Anytime you use 3.1 for, for pi, 1, 4 for pi, that makes it an about problem because that is not actually what pi is. It's about, you've already abouted it. So no, you can't round if it says about. You have to use 3.14 and get as close as then it will get you for that. Do you want me to do that one? If you're looking for how far a tire rolls, that is always circumference. So you are just going to take the 30 inch diameter wheel and find its circumference, which is pi times diameter. And we know that we have to use 3.14 for pi, and we know the diameter was given to us as 30. So yeah, you have to do the 3. You can't 
you can't tell me just nine because that is about. If they give you, if you were in seventh grade, you should be able to get uh, as close as humanly possible. 94.2 inches. And that's still an about. That's not an exact number because 3.4 is not. And that's the same reason for number 13. That is an approximation, they say. A PPROX. Brianna Massey. Would you round? Well, number, number, if it says to the nearest, that's a very good indication that it is rounding. Wait, how come I can't? Uh, no. To the nearest cent, what is the cost of 10.2 gallons of gasoline? Uh, and this is the note to write to yourself for this. You cannot, you cannot round to the nearest cent until you've done all the calculations. Okay, you can't say I'm just going to make this 10 and I'm going to make that $2 and call it a day. You must do the ugly math. You must do the ugly math. Okay, so you have to take, uh, you're doing that much and it's the cost of 10.2, uh, you're going to have to take 10.2. It's not an easy thing, is it? Times 10.2. I'm not sure I want to do this. I'll do it, just because I'd like to do problem. 2 times 9 is what? 18, 16, 17, 3, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0. Third one, drop two zeros. Oh, it's easy, because there's ones there. 9, 8, 1, 2, what's this? 8, 7, 12, 13, 2, 2, four decimal places, one, two, three, four. So your choice is either $22.32 or $22.33. Because we don't have a thousand of a cent as part of our things. Which one is it and why? From I, John? What number tells you that it's 33? Yeah. You gotta go to the number after the, your last digit here. This seven, because it's five or bigger, means you add one to this, making it a three. Twenty-two dollars thirty-three cents. We might as well do three. I'm sure somebody got it wrong somewhere in my wallet in there. Uh, this is a win loss. This is a win loss total thing here. So when you do your ratio box, that's what you're comparing. Your wins to losses and total gains. This is the ratio, and this is the actual. Win to loss, even though you can't see it, is 3 to 2. So 3 to 2, if you won 3 and lost 2, that's how many total games? 5. That's your proportion totals. Now, actually, it looks like you paid 30. Is that 30? Yeah. You actually played 30 games there. So that goes there, and then you can just go, this is pretty simple. 5 times what is 30? 6. So you multiply all these by 6. That's 12. That's 18. How many games did they win? 18. It's a lot of games. Colquitt. El numero el uno. What angle of an isosceles triangle is 100 degrees? What is the measure of the other two? Well, this is the key word here, Cameron Colquitt. What does isosceles mean? All right, isosceles means two equal sides. So when you sketch this, when you sketch this, well, that actually can't be it. Your isosceles triangle actually will look like this. It doesn't matter, but has to have two equal sides. What do you know about isosceles triangles? You can't figure this out unless you know one very important fact. Besides the two angle, or besides the two sides being equal, what else do you know about isosceles triangles? Isabel? Yeah, the side, the angles opposite those sides have to be equal. Okay. So if one angle is 100 degrees, there's no way these two angles could be 100 degrees. Why? 
Why couldn't this be 100 degrees? Because if it's 100 degrees, that's 100 degrees, which would give you a total of 200 degrees, but you can't have a triangle that has more than 180 degrees. So you know this one has to be 100 degrees. How many degrees do you have left in your triangle if that one's 100 degrees? 80. 80. Both of these put together have to be 80, and they're both the same because it's an isosceles triangle. So you cut 80 in half, and that's where the 40s come in. This is 40, and that has to be 40. Number 16. Don't say we already did it. Somebody said we already did it. Yeah, sorry. Somebody said we already did it. It's distributive property. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. There's not much more to it than that. Because 1 is negative, the whole thing is negative. Are right, the Harrington? Oh, no, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> you did it before? Yeah. Uh, let me look and see what we got here. We did 11, we did 12, we did 13, we did 14, we did 15, we did 16, 17, 18, 18. Oh, we did all those, did we? Not not four, mm -hmm. six. Oh, I, I was on this. We did one, we did one. Nobody has issues with four or five. Yeah, let's make sure we got four and five together here. A bag contains only red marbles and blue marbles in the ratio of three to two. Okay, and that I would start off because it tells you a ratio of things. I would write that red to blue to total ratio box down. Three red, two blue, every five marbles has to have that ratio. If there are 24 red marbles, how many blue marbles are there? Well, three times eight is 24, so two times eight is 16, and that gives you a total of 40 total marbles. How many blues would there be? There'd have to be 16, that's where this comes from. If one marble is drawn from the bag, what's the probability that the marble is blue? Well, how many blue marbles do you have? 16. How many total marbles are in the bag? 40. That's your probability. It just needs to be reduced, divide top and bottom by 8, and end up with 2 fifths. You could draw the bag with 16 and whatever marbles, but that might get a little long. And Oh, no. oh, this one here, 1.86 times 10 to the fifth. How do I change that to standard form? This exponent tells you how many places the decimal moves. This decimal has to go to the right because it's positive. It makes it a big number. Five times. Two of those five are going to be taken up with the 8, 6. So how many zeros are going to be after the 6? Three because you need a total of five places. One, that's one move. That's two moves. Three, four, and five. The speed of light is about 186,000 miles per second, which would mean it could go around the Earth how many times? If the Earth is approximately, I believe it's close to 24,000 miles in circumference. In one second, light would go around the Earth somewhere around eight times. In one second, thousand one, it's already gone there eight times. Right? That is how incredibly fast the speed of light would be. The speed of sound is not so much that fast, but speed of light, yes. Anybody else while we're here? Was that all? Was it number seven? I'm sure we did number seven. Well, number seven. Write 8% as a reduced fraction and as a decimal. Well, children, what does percent mean, Cameron Colquitt? Out of what? Right, so 8% is 8 one hundredths. Okay, 
reduce that, 4 goes into both of those, 2 over 25. And then what decimal is 8 hundredths but 0 0.088 eight hundredths? 8 hundredths, 8 hundredths and a fraction. What was that all? Six. Will that be the last one if it's six? It's yes. yes. A pyramid with a square base has how many edges? The easiest to draw yourself a nice little square. Just put it down on top of it. Edges are placed where faces come together. Looks like we got one, two, three, four that make up the base. And then one, two, three, four that make up the ones going to the point. So I'm guessing that there's probably eight or so. If we be so there. This, ladies and gentlemen, wraps up the test of the emergency.